It's time to say goodbye to hold music and say hello to fast customer support with Service Cloud. With trusted AI and data working together, you can skip long wait times and deliver efficient, personalized service right away, all while keeping support costs low and more customers happy. Reimagine your customer support with the number one AI CRM for service. Learn what's possible at salesforce.com slash products slash service. This episode is brought to you by Carnegie Mellon's Tepper School of Business. Want to advance your career or switch fields? An MBA from Carnegie Mellon's Tepper School of Business can help. Earn your degree from a top-ranked business school with a thought-provoking curriculum, one-on-one leadership coaching, support from experienced career counselors, and full-time online hybrid and accelerated MBA formats. Join the intelligent future. Visit cmu.edu slash Tepper to learn more. My name is Jeremy Quintanilla. You are listening to Age of Jeremy. I'm an entrepreneur, and I'm the co-founder of Age of Radio and 3T Fitness, and, well, other businesses that I am working on. This podcast is about everything that I learn and the trials and tribulations it took to learn them. I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for tuning in to The Age of Jeremy. I hope you all are doing amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming back and listening to our amazing show. As always, before we get started, I do have some news this week. I didn't have news last week, mainly because just so much is going on and so much is going on again this week. It's slowly starting to kind of slow down and get back to normal. The first couple of weeks, uh, I'll be honest, this was the first year that we did 1099s for Age of Radio because of the amount that the hosts made. We had to report their earnings to the IRS. So we did the 1099s and then we also have one, two, three employees that had to have their, had to fill out W9s and get their 1099s for the money that they made for working for Age of Radio. And so I had to get all that done. And then I had to get the 3T Fitness 1099s done by the end of January. And then uh, Megaphone, one of the systems that we use and some of the ads that get paid out to us via their platform, they um, they were purchased by Spotify recently and they had to change over some of their accounting. So the money that got paid out to us for January didn't hit till February. And then we have so many podcasts now that need statements that I had to teach someone else how to do some of that. And then we're going to be bringing possibly another person on to help with that um, as we continue to grow our business. Um, And and hopefully I can utilize some of these people to do other stuff um, because we have a lot of moving people pieces that we need to kind of get get going with age of radio and so and so and so it's finally kind of slowing down so we can really get started but if you want to be a part of age of radio the growing podcast community the podcast network that has a spot for everyone the podcast network for everyone that's shaping the universe make sure that you follow us on facebook at age of radio make sure that you join the community and be part of the conversation with our age of radio addicted to podcasting facebook book group. Also make sure that you follow us on Instagram at age of radio verse and on Twitter at age of radio. If you have a podcast, we would love to have you be part of the age of radio network. Um, feel free to reach out to me, um, or, uh, send me uh, a tweet on Twitter and Joey can get back to you, or you can email me at jeremy.quintany at age of radio.org. That's Jeremy J E R E M Y dot Quintany Q U I N T A N I L L. LA at age of radio.org. Um, you can go to age of radio for hosting and read up about it. We're going to be changing some of that up so we can get you in contact with myself or Joey, our senior podcast development officer. Um, and then we will have some other stuff that we will be releasing soon in regards to getting your podcast on the network and some of the changes that we're making to it all better for the host, because this is about the hosts, at least the, this part, the network part, the podcast network part of our age of radio media company that's turning into a larger media company is about the host. That being said, if you want to follow me, Age of Jeremy, that's Instagram at Age of Jeremy. That's Twitter at Age of Jeremy Q on LinkedIn, which we don't do a lot for lots of reasons. I explained it on some other episodes. That is LinkedIn, uh, Jeremy Quintanilla. And then one of my favorite places to hang out is TikTok. Haven't been doing as many TikToks lately, but that Age of Jeremy on TikTok. If you want to be part of the 3T Fitness Warrior community, um, go ahead 
ahead and follow Coach JV underscore. That's Coach JV underscore on TikTok. And Kevin, anytime on TikTok, feel free to join our Warrior program. Head on over to 3tfitness.com um, or reach out to John on TikTok. So that being said, I wanted to talk about some marijuana news because it looks like there are some marijuana stocks that are a buy. So um, there's this cannabis watch on Market Watch. I encourage you to look at. I'm not going to go into too many of the specific actual companies that are a part of this. Um, it looks like one, uh, it's a APHA Afria. Um, looks like it uh, raised it. Uh, so one of these analysts, Zuanic, reiterated his overweight rating on a free stock. That's APHA. Um, it's up 28%, and he raised his 12 month price target to 32.50. Um, I don't know what it's sitting at 25.71 right now. I, I would say um, if you uh, want to get into the cannabis game and you don't want to sell cannabis or marijuana, I would recommend purchasing, uh, looking at market watch and looking over some of this, these cannabis stock and getting into that because as the fed moves to moves to make marijuana recreational, all of these four public uh, marijuana companies that start trading recreationally across the United States, their numbers are just going to blow up. And I am just mentioning this because I, uh, my, um, I am an advocate for marijuana use myself. I don't use it on a daily, daily basis. I usually don't use it at all. Um, I did, uh, since it became recreational here in Arizona, I've done it a few times um, uh, with my, I guess, family, I guess you could say, <laughs> with my family um, to help me relax. I am uh, have a great, a great, fantastic esoteric book by Aleister Crowley um, about the benefits of marijuana marijuana and meditation. And, um, that book is a original copy. I have it at my mom's house stored away, um, nice and probably out in the heat. So books probably ruined and lost all value, but, uh, it talks about the ben of how to dose and how to meditate with marijuana and the benefits of meditating with marijuana. And that is something that I've always been interested in. Me personally, I don't like the, the, the overly high feeling. Um, and I don't like being so, uh, tired from marijuana use that I just want to sleep. Uh, so, uh, there are some marijuana strains or mixes that, um, and again, I'm not a pothead, so I don't, don't know all of the lingo properly or not. And I didn't mean pothead in a negative connotation. I meant someone who's really good with the marijuana. <laughs> Um, and the nomenclature for it. And so I like strains that tend to have that more energy where you just get that peaceful feeling because it is beneficial. Um, and there was a while that we did uh, entertain buying a CBD company, um, myself and some of my business partners, um, and we got into one and then they, we just, they decided not to move forward with us being a part of it. And we kind of backed out on it and then we never went back to it. But that was when it was just CBD. Um so I, I really recommend you to get involved. Here are some of the symbols uh, that you could look up. There's APHA, that's a free up. Then there's TLRY, that is a Tilray. Um, and then there is CGC, which I don't know what that stands for. And then there's WEED, which is weed. Um, and then there's THCX and SPX. So I would recommend going and researching some of those because I think that that's a great place to be in. I think marijuana and cryptocurrency, if you have extra money that you want to blow, that's not part of your overall retirement strategy, you could probably dabble. You could probably mix in a fair share of this stuff into your retirement portfolio to help diversify it. Um, but if you had some extra money and you kind of wanted to be a little bit more speculative, I think weed and cryptocurrency are your best bets. I think Ethereum is the 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 best place to be. And a lot and and the problem with the people don't understand with the cryptocurrency and I'm in no way an expert. Um, but one of the things that people don't tend to understand with the cryptocurrency is that there are technologies that are behind the cryptocurrencies. Um, and, and there are technologies and cryptography that goes in um, with you with you securing the blockchain and getting paid in that specific currency. And that's essentially how it's minted for some of them, not all of them. And so 
I feel like the reason why Bitcoin has shot up so much, not only because of the speculation pieces of it, but also because of the blockchain piece of it that was behind it. So as more and more people started to use that technology, the more and more that needed to be the crypto cryptography needed to take place on the blockchain. And then that, I guess, minted more of those coins and those coins were sold again. I'm not a a master at it. If you are, please shoot me a line at Twitter at age of Jeremy Q. I'd love to have you on the show and we could talk about cryptocurrency um, and, and more about it. And so, but, but so when you look at that and you look at the Ethereum platform, they have such strong technologies and platforms that are behind them on creating and, and utilizing technology with this blockchain that I feel that those nonprofits, in this case, Ethereum um, and Bitcoin, that, that those coins are going to continue to go up in value because they're going to be used more. Um, and they're going to be used more because of their technologies that are behind them with something like Dogecoin, where I don't believe that they're, and again, if I'm wrong, please reach out reach me, reach out to me at Twitter. If the technologies that are behind them, if there's nothing there, then all you're doing is speculating on something. Like it's, it's nothing, right? Kind of, I guess, almost how you speculate on, on regular paper currency when it's not backed by anything. But some of the currencies are backed by baskets of goods or they're tied to another currency or whatever the case is. So, but when we look at that, I think that Ethereum and Bitcoin is something that you should have in your portfolio now. And I am a big fan of decentralized currencies and I am a big fan of kind of like the cyberpunk um, futuristic uh, computer technology hacker worlds um, that we see in sci-fi. I'm a big fan of a lot of that stuff. And I think that if we have decentralized coins um, that aren't managed by the state, but can be sold on different exchanges and can be, um, I guess, accepted places, I'm a huge fan of that. And so I would hope that if you are interested in that, you take some time, uh, just like I should take more time to learn more about the technologies that are behind it about the specific currencies themselves and see how that we can implement them into our businesses and how we can implement them into our communities and how we can actually create something with them where it's decentralized away from the government's currency. Uh, And again, if you don't, if you are not familiar with me, I am a leftist uh, Marxist um, uh, thinker or communist, however you want to talk about it. And no communists don't believe in the, uh, I guess the government's control of everything. That's just a long story, but we don't believe that. And so, especially we don't believe in dictatorship. We believe in the people and we believe in the community itself. And so when we look at decentralized currencies, that is a very big factor for, um, for what I believe in and for what communists believe in, um, that we shouldn't have government backed currencies. Um, and so, or government made currencies. And so I encourage you to educate yourself on that as well. And again, just like I need to educate myself more on some of the cryptocurrency piece, and I would love to have you on the show. We're going to start having interviews on the show and doing a lot more in that regard as we build this specific show and build the platform. Um, so that's really all I had for the week with uh, uh, with news. Again, it really wasn't news. It's just that these weed stocks are taking off, and I think that you should be a part of it, and you should learn how to um, learn more about cryptocurrency and start getting into that. Um, but don't get taken for the speculative pieces. Invest in good cryptocurrency that's on the rise. I think Ethereum, Litecoin, Bitcoin, when I think of those, and that's what we're, we purchase, and that's what I purchase, um, and that's what I'm a big fan of. Uh, so, and again, don't if you want to tie it into your retirement portfolio, um, but don't over don't overdo it. Have extra money if you want to take a couple thousand dollars and buy pieces of Bitcoin and some Ethereum full coins and some Litecoin full coins. I say go and do it. Uh, XRP is another one that you might be interested in. They have a decent technology behind it. Not a huge fan of Dogecoin. I think it will rise, obviously, because of the speculative push on it. But but as far as but as far as everything else goes uh, with the coin, I don't know enough about it to give other advice than Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum. Uh, and with weed, I encourage you, if you can do recreational weed, get more involved with weed. Uh, as this opens up, as the weed opens up federally, uh, 
Like there are so many opportunities for businesses um, to not only sell weed, to ver- to grow their weed, have vertical integration where they grow their own weed and pass it down to themselves. There's so much health and wellness within weed it, it cons- consumption um, that it, 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 we're just going to be in a great place here soon as this, this goes. And there are lots of opportunities. Um, and just again, just real quick, because I talk about this later in the episode, I, I started recording these after I recorded the main piece that I want to talk about, uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it'll help me maybe, maybe prep a little bit better for the episodes by having the main section recorded, just going into it. And then just talking about this new stuff on the day that I, uh, that I, the night before I released the episode, um, but later on, I, I talk about uh, not wanting to just focus on having the profit. Um, I think that if 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 you do get into if you want to get into a business, you shouldn't just focus on the profit and the money making piece of it. You want to be a part of something that's going to be uh, changing the world uh, or changing your community uh, or helping change your family. Um, and and I think that the weed piece of it, if you look at the health aspects of weed, um, if you look at the what you could learn if you started growing your own weed and other vegetables that you could grow, you could come up with something that's great that could help a lot of people. Um, so I encourage you to think about that and not just think about profit if you're looking for new ventures. Um, but I guess when it comes to your retirement, you should only think about profitable <laughs> companies that are inside your portfolio. Um, so I guess it's it's really up to you on what you're going to do and you are going to do that anyway. So uh, thank you so much. And and we're going to take a quick break. And uh, once we get back, we'll go into the, the main topic. I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about, about whether you should be first at something or whether you should be better at it. And I uh, talk a little bit about why I choose being better at it. So stay tuned. Get out of the trenches of tedious tasks like managing order fulfillment and start growing your business with ShipStation. They'll help increase profitability by automating your workflow with their simple, easy-to-use dashboard. With it, you can pretty much do everything you need to quickly and easily. Update order information, print labels, compare rates, optimize shipments, and even set up automatic delivery notifications. And it doesn't matter where you sell. Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify. ShipStation can integrate pretty much anywhere online. Another great thing about ShipStation? They can help reduce costs with industry-leading discounted rates from some of the biggest mail carriers. You might even be able to get up to 89% off USPS and UPS rates. So, make this year your most profitable one yet. Sign up for your free 30-day trial at ShipStation.com and use the code SPOTIFY. That's ShipStation.com with the code SPOTIFY. One of my favorite movies is a movie called Margin Call. And today I had a call with a company for some podcast advertising, a company that we go through and an amazing platform that they have. And it was a very uplifting call because we sold quite a bit of ad inventory in this one call and the possibility to sell some other ad inventory um, is very high. So you might be asking yourself, what would I be sad about or concerned about regarding this specific situation uh, being that we just sold some advertisements or ads inventory. And if you're not familiar with what ad inventory is, ad inventory are the available slots that uh, um, uh, a media company allots in their media for them to have an advertisement. So for instance, newspapers, very common. You have like a page that's that's blank that you want to sell an ad for. You have some spots in the newspaper that you want to sell some ads for. Uh, It's ad inventory. The same thing goes for radio. They have commercials throughout the show. They have a certain length of commercials that they want or a certain time frame that they're going to be playing commercials. And within that time frame, they have you the they have uh so many ads that they want to have within that time frame and that would be their ad inventory the same thing goes with podcasting because podcasting is very similar to to broadcasting and it's another media uh media medium and so we sold quite a bit of ad inventory for the, in this uh with this company but the company that we utilize for it it's a third party company that finds advertisers and tries to unload some of their inventory uh, very common in the media business and that company 
uh, has an amazing platform and it's growing really, really well. And they're doing a lot of things within it. Um, and they're adding some very interesting dynamic ad insertion, similar to the advertisements that you hear on age of Jeremy here, um, which are dynamic ad insertion placements from megaphone, which is an advertiser that sells advertisements with it. Um, and then there's lots of other companies that are doing these types of things as this technology gets better, which a lot of the ad companies are 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 focusing on these types of products because there's really, really good money in it. But we still don't have a lot of good podcasting apps. And so it reminded, having this technology happen and the long-term strategy that I have for Age of Radio really kind of got me um, to thinking and it kind of brought me down a little bit. Um, and, and it kind of has to do with this specific clip. This is a clip um, that Jeremy Irons uh, uh He's the villain in Die Hard 3. But this is from the movie Margin Call. Jeremy Irons does a fantastic job in this movie. And this is something that he says within the within the show. Uh, uh, it's not really relevant to what's going on in the episode. You can go and watch it. It's a great movie. Um, but again, this is what I thought about. And I think about this a lot. Um, and it kind of plays an important role on the things that I try to do and try to stay focused on. So let's hear that clip. What have I told you since the first day you stepped into my office? There are three ways to make a living in this business. Be first, be smarter, or cheat. No, I don't cheat. And although I like to think we have some pretty smart people in this building, it sure is a hell of a lot easier to just be first. It is a fantastic movie, and that's one of the best scenes in the entire movie. Jeremy Irons does a fantastic job. It's also got Kevin Spacey in it. Um, it's got uh, Vision, uh, Paul Bettany, I think is his name, and uh, they do a fantastic job. Demi Moore's in it, uh, and um, uh, Zachary Quinto or Quinto's in it. I don't, I'm terrible with names and pronunciations, something I should probably work on, especially being in the media broadcast business. But the reason why I bring that up is because one of the things that pisses pisses me off is trying to do all of this without any cash. The one thing, and, and that's a really big problem with small businesses and one of the things that leads to a lot of the problems, which is the main reason why I continue to have my job at the bank and not to just leave and focus on 3T Fitness. Uh, a, I want the money that's in 3T Fitness. They can pay me out some, right? I'm an owner and I do work for 3T Fitness um, as a, a chief financial officer. And so with that, I don't do that full time because I want most of that money to stay in the business to help grow the business because I've seen that you need cash to grow the business that you want. That's the first problem. Uh, and so when we, we extrapolate that or take that over to age of radio, the reason why I don't get investors to get the cash that I need is because I don't want other people involved with the business. Um, other than my friend, John and the other people that I bring in because it's a family business and I want to do things slow and I want to do them right. But the problem with that is, is then you get into the problems of people that are doing things first. Now, when Jeremy Irons says you can do things smart, I kind of think about that as doing it better. And that's one of the things that I constantly have to remind myself that the reason why I'm spending so much time building a strong tribe or building a strong community with our addicted podcasting community, with our age of radioverse, moving into Twitter, adding in the ad space piece of it is that I want, I, that I want everybody to know and hear about age of radio. I just want it to be so big and, and so ubiquitous that I can just say the name age of radio and everybody knows what I'm talking about. And so it, unfortunately it's going to take a lot longer to get to that place without money, but I think that I can do it better. And when I hear that these companies that have the money, that they have the, the talent already because they're buying the talent and then that talent is making that product and they're getting it to market faster. That always pisses me off. Not that I'm not happy for them. I'm very you know, grateful for this specific company. And, and, but I, I get frustrated because I wish that I would kind of go and get that money that I need to get to move things a lot faster or push myself a little bit harder to be faster. One of my biggest problem areas is that I unfortunately move slowly, but because of that slowness, I traditionally do things a lot better and they're much longer lasting than what other people can do. And so I know that in the long run, 
that the strategy and plan that I have is much better. But it's something that uh, I wanted to bring up in this podcast because hopefully you're a small business owner, you're someone that has a side hustle. That's something that you have to think about. If if you if you focus on your your side hustle as your full time career, you can grow it a lot faster. But will you necessarily grow it better? And then secondly, the money that you could, that you're getting from it, if you need that to live off, you can't repump that money into the business. So I feel that, that the, that even though the reason why age of radio has been able to make big, huge strides, um, every year, it, even though we're not a huge, huge company is because we, we, we move at a good pace. And so the biggest things, if you've heard me talk about is keeping to my three, my, my main initiative, which is getting the age of radio app. That's my number one initiative this year and uh, getting to 140 podcasts. Those are the two things that I really, really want to focus on. Now we do have a revenue goal that I think that we'll meet as we add those new podcasts. And as we uh, create better advertisement strategies and getting new clients to buy into um, the age of radio network and being able to sell some of that ad inventory. And that's going to take some people's help. And I would be naive to think that I would do this on my own. I have no problem getting, having, getting the talent and doing it. Um, it's just that we unfortunately don't have the money to get the full talent that we need. Um, and I'm going to pay people what I can. Right. And then, and, and I don't want to take advantage of people. So based off of those, those things as a business owner, you need to figure out what it is that you're trying to do. And one of the biggest problems that I have, um, a lot of people consider me an entrepreneur, uh, or have an entrepreneurial spirit, but I feel that the entrepreneurial spirit is just trying to flip a dollar, right. Or flip something into making money. Like a house flipping is in my opinion, stupid. Um, I don't think that those people have any talent. That's my personal opinion. If you hate me for it, I don't give a shit. Um, you can go and flip a house, not super hard. Um, there's, you can learn how to do it. Um, and you can flip money at it. You can go to Goodwill and buy Texas instrument calculators for $13 and flip those on eBay. That does not make, I do not feel that what that does adds more value and create something more better within our world. And so when people ask me, you know, when people call me an entrepreneur, I don't think of myself as an entrepreneur because I'm not just trying to make money. If I were trying to make money, there's a lot of other things that I would be doing. The money comes with it, right? As you build an empire. Um, but I want to solve actual problems. And the problem we're trying to solve with uh, Age of Radio was originally empowering creators and getting them a free platform and the ability to get their show heard and and get it get it going more and that was the key area of what we were trying to do and as we saw that there were lots of people that didn't know how to do their own editing we wanted to be able to provide good affordable editing for people rather than these ridiculous dollar amounts that are going out there. And so as we build these things and provide these for our podcast, podcast hosts, then there's other technologies that we can build like the app that's going to just dis destroy, in my opinion, all of the other apps. And it may not destroy the app, the other apps right away. It may take some time, but eventually it will destroy all of the other apps. And we will change the way in which people listen to podcasts and interact with their listeners while they're listening to the podcast in one one app. Now, does that change the world? Absolutely not. That's not the key purpose of what that specific app is trying to do. It is just trying to make that app better. It's not trying to go out there and make money. We will make money at it. Yes. But that app is in and of itself. I didn't say, oh, I'm going to make this app so I can make money. I'm making this app so I can be better than what's already there and provide a better experience for listeners and provide a better experience for podcast hosts to interact with that app and interact with their listeners. And that's what we're really kind of focused on with that. And then from there, then we look at what you look at what it is that you want your mission to bring to the world. And then you focus on those things. This isn't really about money. It never has been. And so with 3T Fitness doing so well and becoming a seven figure company, it, it's it, it, we didn't do that for money. We did it because we wanted to change people's lives. And that's what we focused on. So we stayed true to our vision. So as a small business owner, I encourage you to kind of think about a vision that you have for your small business and what you can do to, to stay true to that vision and make an impact in the world, right? 
And so uh, again, I, if if you do flip things, no offense to you. I, I I didn't mean to to offend you if that is something that you enjoy doing. I'm just saying that what I want what I want small business owners to think about is how they're impacting the community that they live in and how they're changing the world for the better and what they're offering, right? Because once we get that app going, then there's other B two B services that we're going to offer because I feel that we can do it better, right? We can help the community within Glendale, Arizona. We can start building the city that I want to see here and make it a better tech place for uh, future businesses to come. So there's like a longer, bigger plan that goes into all of this. And you don't get that plan when you're just thinking about getting more and more money. Now, getting having the need to make more and more money can kind of push you sometimes. So I don't I don't think that that's necessarily what it is that, that I want you to take away from this. What I want you to take away away from this is I want you to have a vision for your small business, right? Like a true mission of what you're trying to accomplish and then staying focused to that mission with the services and products that you're providing to your customer. Because if you go into it saying that I just need to be first so I can make money, it's not going to, it's not going to last forever. So you need to back up and say, okay, I'm, this is the vision for what I'm trying to accomplish. And this is how I want to, this is what and why I want to accomplish this specific vision so that I can accomplish this thing in the world and make the world this better place. And I I don't necessarily know. I know for a fact, not everybody's going to walk away from this and say that because everybody usually starts businesses because they want to make money. I have not started any business because I want to make money, but the result was the money. I started the businesses because something pissed me off and I wanted to change whatever it was. So if we think of like Elon Musk, the reason why he ended up going after Tesla, was because he didn't want to have, you know, um, gasoline cars. Like there was uh, something in his mind that thought it was better. So he bought into Tesla. He, I believe he pushed the owners out of it. He became the CEO of it, became the majority shareholder of it or something along those lines. Go look it up. But the point was, was that it, he didn't go to do that to make money. He went that to do that so that he can change the world by having an electrical vehicle. In, in the same mind, the best businesses come and the best ideas come from when you get pissed off about something and you create something that changes it. So like if we go back to the, the piece of the app, I fucking hate all apps. Stitcher is the main app that I use, and that's because of their file organizing system. But I can't interact with any of the other listeners like you can with Breaker. I don't like Breaker because um, uh, just because of the 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 user experience on it. And then I tried to use Google podcast, but Google podcast is the cheapest freaking non-file organizing piece of crap I've ever seen in my life. And I don't touch iPhones. So based off of that, I don't have a lot to work <laughs> with. So then you look at podcast addict and you look at Castbox, and you look at all these things, there's all kinds of problems. And the reason why I feel that a lot of these things exist was because we didn't go and try to create the best experience for all podcasters and and podcast hosts, right? For a platform for everybody. You know, a lot of people, when we think about Age of Radio, we call it the network for everybody because everybody can be a part of it and everybody benefits from it, right? And as we continue to grow that, you know, if you want to be part of Age of Radio, you can be. If you want to leave, you can. If you put more in, we push more, we put more behind you. There shouldn't be, right? And then we have our own original shows that that that's what you would think of as our, our network, right? That we're going to be working on over the next couple of years. So we can provide good journalism to people. So we can provide good entertainment to people. But like the reason why I started this was I didn't want it to be so difficult for people to start a podcast. I wanted it to be easy. A lot of people have great ideas, th- then they're not very technical, and they want to share that voice, but they don't know how to do it because of all the stuff that goes on to it. And so we make it very easy as long as you can record and you can edit and get it to us or, and put it out. It's free for you. And we help advertise your podcast. We try to find advertisers for your podcast. We focus on growing those podcasts. That was the reason why I created it. I didn't do it because I wanted money. I got it. I did it because I got pissed off. And then as I looked at the vision and saw all of the other things that we can do, and things that we could push at that that we that I could be a lot further in, right? If I if I went and got got 
investors, which I don't want to. Um, so I'm going to be focusing on getting a larger loan, right? So if we if we do those things, then we can get that cash to get us pushed out. But you have to figure out how you want to be. So I think of this this line because every time I get frustrated because I'm not first, I just always remember that I can always be better. There is no better network out there than Age of Radio, hands down, as far as being for podcasters. There might be other places that have good shows, but no one takes care of our network the way that we take care of people. And I pride myself on that. And I, I get that. I get that appreciation from the host and the, the, and, and, and I also get that, um, gra- I get that sense that they're grateful for what we're trying to do. And because of that, I'm grateful for them. And I will always do as far as the network portion goes, we will always put the host before anything else. Um, and so w- with your small business, again, I encourage you to think of what your vision should be. I encourage you to find out if you want to be first to market with something, if you want to be better at market with something, right? Or you want to cheat. I don't really necessarily think that you should cheat, but I like being better at stuff. Um, and and that's because when you, when you, and, and sometimes you can be first to stuff, right? Like I was the first to create this type of podcast network, but like, but so I was first with that. Um, we could have been a lot larger if I had a better backing when we started it, but I just did it as fun and and I wanted to solve a problem and I just focused on solving that problem with the least cost as possible. And that allows us to continue to grow and, and increase our revenue threefold since last year. And we'll threefold it again this year and we'll add more products and services and we'll work on changing the world. And we will continue to add products and services that help businesses and creators share their stories. And that's That's our main vision and focus as of right now for what we do with Age of Radio. And I encourage you to have some type of of focus and vision for your business to get you where you need to go Um, and never do it just for money. If you just do it for money, you'll never be happy. Um, and, And if you do it to change the world or you do it because you got pissed off and you wanted to change something, then you will make money and you will be highly, highly successful and you'll be a lot happier as well. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to The Age of Jeremy. Make sure to subscribe on your favorite podcatcher. If you can do me a favor, please rate this podcast if your podcatcher allows you to. Talk to you soon. Okay, everybody, it's Michael E. Cullen II. And I'm Sesame Encarta from the All Too Real Real 2 podcast. We're passionate about movies, TV, and pretty much all things pop culture. Dive into the chaos of failed sitcoms, direct-to-video sequels, and the quirky realms of cinema and TV. Join us every Thursday for your dose of All Too Real 2 entertainment. We'll guide you through debates like whether Howard the Duck qualifies as a superhero. Ponder if Larry the Cable Guy could be the new rock or Schwarzenegger. Discover if some shows and movies should have stayed in the cutting room. Ever heard of a sitcom featuring that dictator with the funny mustache? Well, we watched it. We're dedicated to unraveling the peculiarities of pop culture, sometimes with awesome guests. So, if you're into the eccentric world of pop culture, listen and subscribe to All Too Real 2. Available wherever you find podcasts and on Age of Radio.